Welcome to Farmers Inside Track, episode 411, where we explore the latest advancements and best practices in animal reproduction and livestock management. I'm your host, Octavius Pandil. And today we're diving into the fascinating world of artificial insemination in livestock. Joining us is Dr. Geoff Brown, a renowned veterinary specialist in animal reproduction. Dr. Brown brings us a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table, offering deep insights into the health risks, animal welfare concerns, cost implications and factors influencing the adoption of artificial insemination among livestock producers. Dr. Brown, welcome to Farmers Inside Track. It's absolutely lovely to have you with us today. I'm quite excited about the specific topic on artificial insemination. Can you share with us a brief overview of artificial insemination and its significance in livestock management, including how has the artificial insemination technology evolved over the years and how does AI contribute to genetic improvement in the livestock? Hi, Octavia. Thanks again for having me. Artificial insemination, or AI for short, has been practiced for many years but it's still one of the most effective methods of getting genetic improvement of your flock in a very short time. Doing AI and advising on its many types of implementations is one of the ways I earn a living, so as you can imagine, I'm always keen to talk about it. AI is a useful tool for the commercializing farmer, and it can improve the genetic quality of his or her livestock, but effectively implementing it, even on a small farm, will need some dedicated record keeping and some focused stockmanship So, and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on those requirements a bit later. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that AI is a technology that's absolutely revolutionized animal breeding. And of course, by extension, mankind's ability to grow animals for food production. So as an example, I always like to cite the effect of AI on the dairy industry. Because in the 1940s, when farmers first started to use AI on a broad scale, an average dairy cow would probably produce sort of seven, eight, nine liters of milk a day if you were lucky. But the modern dairy cow, if she's kept under the right conditions, can produce more than 50 liters of milk a day. And many animals produce quite a lot more than that. So this improvement in productivity is largely due to careful selection of the best animal genetics and has led to a substantial reduction in the cost of producing human nutrition from animal products. So AI allows a single male to be the father of many, many more calves or piglets or lambs than he would otherwise be able to if he was just doing natural mating, because the semen that he produces can be split into many, many insemination doses and can even be frozen and then exported all over the world. So this, of course, means that the best bulls or rams or boars or stallions or even dogs can have many, many more offspring than they otherwise would have, and these offspring can then carry the desirable genes. For several generations, the improvement in specific traits that we, as humans, we want from our animals, like carcass mass or average daily gain or milk production or wool quality fiber, so these improvements can be huge. The benefits of AI can be further amplified over several generations by careful selection of these offspring. So the products of the AI, that you select them carefully themselves and then do AI again using another desirable animal. And then you must cull the animals that don't meet the desirable standards and This combination of AI and aggressive culling has created many of the breeds and standards which are so familiar to us today. And what are the primary techniques used in artificial insemination for different types of livestock, including how is semen actually collected, processed and stored for artificial insemination? And are there any specific challenges or considerations when performing AI on different breeds or species of livestock? When performing artificial insemination on female animals, You've got a few decisions that you can make. You can either use fresh diluted semen or refrigerated semen or frozen thawed semen. So as a general rule, freshly ejaculated diluted semen will get you the best pregnancy rates. And the drawback to doing AI with fresh diluted semen is, of course, that the male animal needs to be fairly close to the group of females. So you need to be able to collect semen there and then and then split it and then transfer it to multiple females. It is possible to refrigerate diluted semen. We do this fairly commonly, around 4 to 5 degrees, and that allows you to transport it over long distances, usually across countries, over a sort of 12 to 24 to 36 hour period. And then, of course, when you put it in the body of the female during insemination, it quickly warms up back to body temperature, and then it goes and hopefully does the fertilizing. Although frozen thawed semen, which is the third type, typically has a lower conception rate than fresh semen or refrigerated semen, It does have many other advantages, and the main advantage is that it can be stored basically indefinitely, provided that the liquid nitrogen under which it's stored is not allowed to evaporate. 
It's common for farmers to inseminate their animals with semen that was frozen years before, and often the male animal for which the semen was collected is long dead by the time the AI is actually performed. Most semen used for AI is collected from male animals by means of an artificial vagina, which is of course exactly what it sounds like. You bring the bull to a cow in heat, for example, if you're talking about cattle, then you let him mount the cow, but instead of allowing him to mate normally with normal penile vaginal penetration, you instead you put the artificial vagina over the penis and then you collect the semen when the bull ejaculates into it. This method is by far the best and collects the best quality samples, but it's not always the most practical. So another method that we can use is electrostimulation. So we put a low voltage probe into the rectum of, of the ram and we give some mild electrical stimulation. And this stimulates the nerves that are in control of the ejaculatory muscles in the pelvis and they expel the semen into our collection container, which we can then go and dilute and do insemination with or we can freeze it and use it later or distribute it as we require. AI requires that the semen is placed in the uterus of the female at around the time that ovulation is expected to take place. So in cattle and horses, this is done by passing a special insemination device, which we call a pistolet, through the cervix. In sheep and goats, if using fresh or refrigerated semen, the semen you can place at the entrance to the cervix, so at the front of the vagina. It's very difficult to pass, almost impossible, to pass a pistolet through the cervix of a sheep or a goat. And because frozen thawed semen has such a short lifespan, is weaker than fresh semen, we need to place it as close as possible to the ovulated egg, which means in the uterus. So in sheep and goats specifically, we do a procedure called laparoscopic AI, or laparoscopic artificial insemination, which involves uh, placing the semen directly into the uterus. And to do that, we make two small holes in the flank of the animal. And this is quite an advanced or more difficult procedure that requires quite a lot of operator skill and practice. What are synchronization protocols and how do they enhance the success rates of artificial insemination? For a successful insemination program, it's important that the females are at the optimal stage of their cycle, so that is close to the time of ovulation, before putting the semen into the uterus. Because we want to inseminate the whole herd of animals all at the same time, it's not very convenient for us if we have to do one at 12 o'clock, one at 3 p.m. the following day, one at 7 p.m. that evening, one at 2 a.m. So we make sure that their cycles are all synchronized by manipulating them with drugs. So we give the animals drugs so that they all come into heat at the same time. And the combination of these drugs and the exact timings that they're given are very important and they are what makes up a specific or tailor-made synchronization protocol which would be specific to your animals under your particular farming condition. What are the potential health risks associated with artificial insemination for both males and females, including how is the animal wealth ensured during the AI process? AI is generally a low-risk procedure and has minimal welfare concerns. Transcervical AI, as we do in cattle and horses and sows, is non-painful. Laparoscopic AI in sheep is a higher-risk procedure, which might require sedation or anesthesia and should be performed only by a skilled and practiced veterinarian. The possibility exists that disease or undesirable genetics may be transmitted to a wide population of female animals, and this is probably, in my opinion, the biggest risk, especially if there's poor quality control at the time of semen collection. Let's get into the cost implications of using artificial insemination compared to natural breeding. Generally speaking, compared to the cost of purchasing and keeping a high-quality bull or ram, the cost of buying frozen semen and paying for veterinary intervention, including synchronizing drugs and professional time, is quite a bit lower. But AI does require a farming situation that has good management oversight, regular intervention in the animals, so it might not be the best option in very extensive farming areas or on farms with very poor facilities, as well as on farms where regular management interventions are not already performed. So if you're not already going and doing regular pregnancy diagnoses and getting your animals into a crush regularly, AI probably isn't for you yet. Rather improve those aspects of your farming first. Basic management stuff. And finally, what factors influence the adoption rates of AI among livestock producers? AI is widely used in South Africa, but there are perceived upfront costs and the need for more intensive management. And I think this is probably the greatest factor that discourages farmers from adopting it on a wider scale. So farmers obviously find it easier to purchase a male animal and just allow him to identify the animals in heat and to mate them. But as I mentioned earlier, the veterinary costs of AI are considerably lower than the lifetime cost of male animal ownership. Owning a male animal isn't without risk. They're expensive to purchase often. They're often susceptible to disease and injury. 
They might fight with other males. They can injure animals and humans, especially bulls, can be quite dangerous. I know if I was brave enough to be a farmer, which I'm not, I wouldn't own any male animals and I would do exclusively AI. Thanks so much, Dr. Geoff Brown, veterinary specialist in animal reproduction. For more on the topic, visit www.foodformzanzi.co.za. And that's a wrap. Remember to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. From me, Octavius Pandil, our technical producer, Megan van der Fendt, and the rest of the hashtag team, Food from Zanzi. Thanks for listening. Life in South Africa can be a lot. I mean, scroll through Twitter for a minute and tell me I'm wrong. Thank God for South Africans though, right? We're inspiring and even on the bad days, we fight back with a smile. That's why I love Food for Mzanzi so much. They're not ashamed to celebrate the ordinary unsung heroes who work every day to put food on our nation's tables. Go to foodformzanzi.co.za and never miss an inspiring story.